Hello, welcome to the agency training manual for EC Impact. My name is Lori Byrne, and I'm the senior buyer from Montgomery County Department of Job and Family Services. So welcome to the EC Impact Agency Training Manual. We've created this manual to assist you in navigating EC Impact as either a current provider of services or a potential provider of services for Montgomery County Department of Job and Family Services. Note that some fields will update automatically throughout when forms are completed, the organization's name, company email, and company phone number are a few of the fields that will auto-populate. We do have a table of contents um, available for you. This might help you um, for any issues you might be um, trying to resolve. Um, gives you a snapshot of everything in the uh, EC Impact Manual. And then when accessing EC Impact, all you need to access it is a computer with an internet connection and current version of web browser such as Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, or Safari. To access the EC Impact website, please go to the email that's been provided for you. It can be found on our county website within the RFP as well. Please bookmark the address to easily access EC Impact at your convenience. So if you're logging into EC Impact for the first time, there are two different ways that you can get into the system. One, if we actually provided a solicitation to you, notified you of a solicitation, then you'll be able to enter your username. Usernames and EC Impact are also, are always done with your email address. So please make sure when you're registering or you're logging in, um, from a notification you receive from the county that you use your email address. And then you'll have a password unique to you. The first time that you're logging in, you would use the username, email that we provided to you, and the password, PWD, all lowercase, 123. Once you log in with that, it will then prompt you to put in a unique password for you. If you don't have an account already or, or we did not contact you and, and you're wanting to um, go in and look at the possible solicitations that we have available, just click here to create a new account. Again, you'll just simply put your email and then you'll put a unique password for you. It will, it will prompt you to do that. <clears throat> so if you forgot your password, you will simply click the little login um, button down below that says forgot your password. <clears throat> and EC Impact will walk you through to enter again your username, which should be your email address. And then you will it will automatically generate a password for you. <clears throat> Check your email return to the login page and proceed to log in. If you do not see the email in your inbox, be sure to check the junk or spam folder. If the email is not in either, please contact me, Lori Bird, at lori.bird at jfs.ohio.gov. So again, registering as a new agency, you're gonna log in using that email and then um, you'll have the password that's already been assigned to you, or you can just simply click here to create a new account. So please read all the directions carefully and then click next to continue with your registration process. You'll read all directions um, and then click next. Please enter all required information regarding your agency and then proceed to the next page. You will use your EIN. The system automatically validates your EIN, confirming that you do not already have an EC Impact account. The system will also automatically enter any information linked to the EIN. This is what the agency registration page looks like. 
and you'll enter all of your pertinent information here. Anything with an asterisk is a required field. Please note what username and password you have used has, or have created and enter the required information, then click Next. If you're um, wanting to select a grant or program you'd like to review for bidding requirements, follow the instructions. If you would like to bid on the service, then continue to the next page. Once you review all the agency information that you've entered, click Confirm Registration. It will review your agency's information, and then you'll complete registration with the little complete registration um, prompt below. Once your registration is completed, you will be able to print your confirmation page. You will also receive a confirmation email. To access the rest of EC Impact JFS Agency Training Manual, you first can go at any time to the county website and obtain the JFS Agency Training Manual, the recording of this presentation, or you can go to the Resource Center itself at, within EC Impact and you can continue to view um, this JFS Agency Training Manual there as well. So some common navigation to use as you're going through EC Impact is you'll have the little, it looks like a disk. So that's save and update. That refreshes the page while saving any changes made to your data. Then you have the disk with it looks like a little return arrow. So that saves and returns you to the previous page, returns you to the page last visited while saving any changes made to your data. And then you have one that looks like a little stop sign with an X with the return arrow. That's to cancel and return to the previous page. You'll re return to your previous page and you will not save any changes made to your data. If you're wanting to change the font size of your items that you're entering, you simply click the lowercase a and that will decrease your font size, or you'll click on the uppercase a and that will increase your font size. Again, any fields marked with an asterisk are required fields. Once you get to your, you've logged in, you'll come to your own agency site homepage. You can update this at any time. Um, there are four basic sections, account management, agency information, news and events and calendars, and bidding opportunities and resource center. So the account management allows you to go in and set up your profile, your home page, specific for your actual agency. And we'll go through that in a little bit more detail in just a minute. It will also um, have a place that you can put news, events, or a calendar that pertains to your actual agency and services you may be providing. And then we um, put in under the um, resource center. Again, you'll have the training manual that's available to you to click. And there'll also be forms specific to certain um, items that you may be bidding on or may be interested in bidding on. So we'll go to the account management section. And this is going to help you to change your password. It's pretty um, similar to any, any other program that you change your password. You just simply enter your old password, then enter the new password two times. It must be between six and 15 characters. It must contain at least one character from two of the groups of alpha, numeric, or special characters. There are um, a few characters that are not accepted. That is the comma, the percentage, or any white space. The user profile area is where you can add, edit, or delete any of your information, including primary contact, basic information, email addresses, phone numbers, and mailing addresses. Users may also choose to be included in all emails. You must have one primary contact. 
and there can only be one primary contact per agency. This can be set by selecting the checkbox primary. The primary contact is automatically included in all emails and cannot be deactivated unless a new primary contact is selected. So it is very important that you um, select a primary contact for your agency. And make sure your account is active. Once a user is deactivated, you will need to contact me, Lori Bird, and I've provided my email to reactivate the user account. If by chance they were deactivated um, inattentionally or something. This is how you go in and fill in your contacts. Again, you'll have one person that will be the primary for your agency. That's usually your executive director or your authorized signer. Um, for a potential contract. You'll have their first name, last name, company, and job title. You can use the save and update icon to save and update that information. If you've made an error while entering, you can cancel and return to the previous page and re-enter. And then I want to talk a little bit about signing out. Once you finish using EC Impact for the day, or for the application that you're submitting, you should sign out of EC Impact to ensure the security of your data. Once signed out of EC Impact, pre press the X in the upper right hand corner of your browser to close the window. Gives you a little uh, bit of what the agency information looks like. It's a section where account information, contacts for your agency, your statements such as your mission, your vision um, statements can be added here as well. Any program information such as the type of services that you provide. Those are some items that you might want to put in your agency information and agency profile. The profile pages where all agency specific information is housed and can be updated. This includes the basic information such as the agency name, EIN, staff contact, primary contact, <laughs> website, etc. Account names and addresses, phone numbers and emails of the staff associated with your organization. You may use here to add, edit or delete any account names. Any changes to address, phone numbers, email addresses can all be changed in this section. The account name is a place for any other name for your agency, or if your agency name is abbreviated, you may place the legal name here. So when adding a new record or updating existing records, be sure to select active appropriately. Primary can only be selected for one record, and as I stated previously, that's usually your authorized signer for your organization. To view all agency contacts, click Contacts from the Agency Information section on the home page. From this area, you will be able to see anyone who is currently listed as a contact at your agency, as well as add, edit, deactivate, or delete an agency contact. It's, it's very user friendly. You just simply click add new or click here to edit existing. It's just a, a little um, prompt either way. The agency contact profile page is similar to the user profile page and contains the same information. Name and preference, email addresses, phone numbers, addresses. To request a login once a new contact has been created, you are able to request a login for this user. Just simply click the little prompt that says request login. A contact's email address is commonly used as the username due to the email addresses being unique. So request that login account and you can go in and put the type and their name, their username, and assign a temporary password, save and update. If you have any issues, please contact me anytime and I'll be glad to help you with um, making any staff changes, removing, adding, or getting um, a password assigned to them. 
So to edit or inactivate a program, go to the program profile page, select edit and next to the desired program. So this is where you'd put in maybe the type of services that you provide and perhaps there's a service you're no longer provided and you would want to inactivate that. And this is how you do that. The calendar area will display any events or site visits you have. Some news items will display here as well. So this is something that you can do for your agency. It is not a requirement. This is just something for your use. And if you would like the county to see specific events and things that you are holding. Um, it works very similar to the calendars that we have. Um, so you're just simply using the little arrows back and forth to go between months or go between years. And then site visits is um, a capability that EC Impact has. However, um, Montgomery County JFS does not currently do their um, site visits through EC Impact. However, we do do site visits on a regular basis twice a year for each program. So just be aware of that. So this is the Resource Center. The Agency Resource Center is where you'll be able to find any documents you may need to reference from Montgomery County Department of Job and Family Services. The Resource Center is the lower half. Actually, I'm sorry, this says of the left hand navigation. This is now located on, oh, it's showing on the right, but it's actually on the left hand side of the page. That's what I wanna bring to your attention. So I'm sorry for any confusion. I think once you log in, it will be self-explanatory. Um, like I say, this is the um, section for you as an agency. And then this is where you can go apply for different items, different bids you may want to submit. And then you have the resource center, which has any type of documents um, that are needed for that particular solicitation. If there's an attachment that you see, then you just simply click to open that attachment if you'd like to view it. Let's get to the basics of bidding for um, Montgomery County Department of Job and Family Services. Accessing bid process and bid documents, you would choose the request for proposal you're interested in reviewing from the list located in the left hand navigation. You may access funding opportunities from both. AEP contracting and HSPD is within Montgomery County. So there's times that um, either of us may have things um, out for bid for solicitation here. So you'd simply click the RFP that you're interested in bidding on or the um, item that you're interested in applying for and it will um, take you to that to that specific item. Once you get into the actual item that you're interested in bidding for, um, the page works much like a checklist. You can easily see how much of your bid packet you've submitted. So there's a section here over on your left that says not started. So when the application or form is in not started status, that means that no data has been entered yet. And then in the next little um, tab at the top is in progress. So if you've already started a form, it's set into progress, then the form has been started and saved. The form has not been marked completed yet, and the top bar will remain as in progress until all forms are marked completed within that section. So once you've completed everything, you would move on to ready to submit. Once all forms are marked completed, your top bar should move to ready to submit. At this stage, you should review any information entered, then move on to the submit your application. When a bid packet is submitted status, you will no longer be able to make changes to the information or the forms. If you submit and find you need to make an edit, you may contact me immediately. And depending on if the um, deadline has lapsed, will depend on if any change um, can be made. 
because once the um, process has been closed, there are no changes that can be permitted to it. So as you enter information, you begin to fill out your bid submission. Click on the desired forms. After entering information on your form, you'll have multiple save options, which we've talked about a little bit. The save my work, save my work and return to previous page. Then you have the save my work and mark as completed. And then return to overview page. So the save my work, save my work and return to previous page, these options are for when you need to save or move on to something else and are not finished entering information. The save my work and mark as completed, this option is for when you have entered and reviewed your information and are ready to turn it in. Tabbing from question to question will also save your information, but will not mark it completed. You are able to switch back and forth to forms. There are two ways to switch forms within a bid submission. First, when you are finished with one form, click on Save My Work and return to previous page, and then select the next form. Second, you can use the Switch Forms options located in the upper right-hand corner of the page itself and actually displays little icons. And there's a place where you click Switch Forms and it will take you in between all of the forms within that bid that you are completing. Click on the forms you would like to move to. Now let's talk about uploading actual attachments. Accepted file types for uploading documents. Accepted file types, types are PDF, doc, docx, PPT, PPTX, XLS, XLSX, GIF, JPG, JPEG, BMP, TIFF, RTF, and text. Combine your maximum file size as 8 MB. So the attachment form displays the same as other forms. You simply click here to choose the file. It will take you out to the file that you're wanting to attach. Very similar as when you're working um, in Microsoft Office. So you just click here, save, upload the attachment. I highly recommend once you upload an attachment that you then go on to view that attachment. It will display under the file. Click on the document name to download and open it. Verify it as the attachment that you wanted to attach for that particular item. If you have found that it is the wrong document was uploaded, you may need to delete your attachment. The attachments form displays the same as the other forms. So if you need to delete that, you simply click delete next to the desired document. It's the action over on the right hand side of that, and it will delete that um, attachment. It always asks first if you're sure do you want to delete. If you are sure that you've attached an incorrect document, simply click OK and it will delete that and you can go back through the process above where you go in and you find your file and then reattach the correct one. So submitting a bid proposal. You want to mark all your forms as complete and ready to submit. After you review all of them, click here to mark the form completed. This is save my work and mark as completed. That is your final step to getting ready to submit your bid packet. You must complete these steps for each form until you have completed the entire bid packet. OK, let's get ready to submit. Once all the forms are completed, ready to submit, the, sum, the Submit This Application Now option will appear at the top of the page. Once you are ready and you're assured that all items are correct and ready to submit, you will hit the Submit This Application Now. 
Confirm your email address and make any changes necessary. Select the submit this application now. Now that you have successfully submitted your bid proposal, you will see everything is now in submitted status. It will change everything over here on the right under status as submitted. And once a bid proposal is in submitted status, you will be able to view the information entered. You will not be able to make any changes, however, to that information. If you would like to print, here is how you would print. There are several different levels you may print. You may print your entire bid packet. This will print all items within the bid packet. You may print just the agency packet. This will print all forms that are agency specific. You may print the program packet. This will print all forms that are program specific. Or you may print an individual form. This will print the individual form itself. So if you would like an actual paper copy of this, you can actually click the um, full application, select the option you would like to use and continue to print. You're going to see it shows um, like a little printer icon. And you'll simply click here to print. And then the options are print the page, print to PDF, open in a new browser window. So you'll be given three different options. From the community vendor portal, click the print icon next to the desired program you would like to print, then choose which print option to use. Program packets are specific to each program listed, so click the print icon to see print export options for the program packets. From the community vendor portal, open the form you would like to print. Simply click here to print the current form. It just simply has little printer icon in the lower right hand corner of your form are the options for printing. In the right hand navigation on the bottom of the investment application, all questions and answers will be listed as a frequently asked question for that specific RFP. This references RFP 5701-2023 CSD Clinical Services. There will be a Q&A specific to that RFP, and it will be listed under the question and answer once we've received all questions and answers. There um, is a deadline within all RFPs as to when that information becomes available. So you just simply look for that specific RFP by 4 p.m. And the date for this particular RFP is January 19th, 2023. Now let's go through the bid process itself. You would please follow steps one through five above in registering and logging into EC Impact. Once you identify the service you're bidding on, click on the request for proposal. Just made an example of RFP 5701-2023 CSD Clinical Services. You will complete all questions under the Representations, Assurances, and Certifications Form tab. Complete all questions under the Scope of Work Narratives tab. Complete all questions under the Subcontractors Collaborators tab that apply to your organization and this specific bid for service. If none, indicate as such. Complete the price sheet to represent all services you can provide and the corresponding price indicating per hour, per assessment, report, etc. And again, this is just an example for that particular RFP. Step five is the bid packet attachments. This section is very detailed and the required insurance requirements for the specific service to be let. You will also need to complete a taxpayer identification and certification form. Form three is the disclosure policy. This form is available in the resource center. It must be completed and uploaded with your bid submission. 
Form 4 is the Property Tax Affidavit. This form is available in the Resource Center. It must be completed in its entirety and notarized prior to your upload with your bid submission. The Accord 25 Certificate of Liability Insurance must be submitted with all requirements completed. You must upload an Accord form for each required insurance. It's very possible that some of these insurances will be on the same Accord form. You would just upload it multiple times to meet each individual required insurance for the services that you are submitting your bid on. Note, if you do not have the minimum requirements at this time, you may upload a letter from your current insurance carrier indicating your current coverage and the ability to obtain all required insurance by the commencement of the contract if awarded. We'll need to upload your certificate of Ohio's workers' compensation if you are required by law to carry that. Your most recent audited financial statements must be uploaded. All licenses, upload and attach your operator's driver's license, professional license, and certification within the state of Ohio. And again, these are requirements that are specific to the service that you are bidding on. So these may change depending on what you are um, providing your bid for. The unit of service, please use this section to identify the services you are bidding to provide the unit cost associated with each line of service. For an example, case management, the number of units proposed, the cost per hour, the total amount of number of one-way trips and miles if it's a transportation service, um, the proposed cost, the total amount for line of service. Use the add item for each line of service proposed to provide. The total cost for each proposed line item should not exceed the award amount in total. A price sheet has been included in required forms to complete. It can be found in the Resource Center under the RFP 5701-2023 CSD Clinical Services Pricing Form. Follow the instructions as noted in the EC Impact Manual to submit your completed bid proposal with bid attachments. I'm just going to go back up to the very top where we started just to make sure that you have all the contact information that you need if at any time you have any issues whatsoever with um, being able to get into EC Impact or as you're going through to submit a bid please feel free to reach out to us at mcdjfs-cd at jfs.ohio.gov or myself at lori.bird at jfs.ohio.gov. It can also be reached at area code 937-225-6188. We wish you the best of luck in um, submitting your proposals and we look forward to working with you in the future, hopefully, and good luck on your um, bids. Thank you so much for um, viewing the agency training manual for EC Impact. Thank you and have a good day.